Hello everybody! Welcome back to Galaxy Quest Match Lightspeed! We are doing batch two! A, a whole new batch for Lightspeed! We're starting it up! Hello! Uh, hello, the world, you could say. We hello. have a new face! Hello! Hello! We got a new face! Yeah. We got GA! Hi, it's me! I record Death Battle reviews and am G uh, Lightspeed's number Friend. one super fan. And now. Or is that you um, called him GA and no one knows who the fuck Oh, fuck Galactic Attorney! <laughs> it's okay. Boy. Nobody knows who I am anyway. <laughs> okay, so we're doing. We uh, we asked you guys for some more matches, and now we're gonna start getting to them. I gotta find the first one that we're doing today. Oh yeah, the first one's the very first match we were suggested, which is Light Yagami versus Conan and Agawa. So this no is more light yeah. matches. No more. No, there's a lot of light I'm, matches. I love I talking about light, but I'm gonna. I start to run out. Yeah. So say about the guy. But uh, today, oh yeah, Light versus Conan, scenario, Conan becomes L, basically. Can they figure out each other's name? So, simple stuff, uh, I, I've got my Light Yagami argument, and Rivet's gonna go for Conan, so I'll, I guess I'll start. So this, this is usually a sticking point for me whenever someone is, uh, starting a match of, uh, like, starting the Kira case from scratch. At the start of the series, nobody knew where Kira operated from, since the murders were taking place all over the world. So to prove that Light was in a specific region of Japan, L broadcasted a man named L Lind L. Taylor in one specific region, but then claimed it was a worldwide thing. So when Lind L. Taylor died, that gave away where Kira was hidden and made L search much easier. However, if anyone else wants to pull off this scheme, they have to be okay with being responsible for the death of a criminal. If Taylor doesn't die, there is no proof as to where Kira might be, and Conan... I think would absolutely be against murdering somebody just to get closer to this case. Also, the thing about Conan is he outright doesn't believe in the supernatural. So it's going to take much longer for him to come to the conclusion that this isn't an elaborate chain of murders that have been set up and are instead the result of a magical notebook that only requires someone's face and name to work. I do believe that Light will figure out that Conan is the brains of their operation as opposed to Kogoro. Just watching him long enough will prove that to Light. I mean, he's kind of... He, he kind of he kind of fucks up. Conan is the brains of that whole thing, and I do think that he can draw the connection between Conan and Shinichi because Ran is tied to them both. She knew Shinichi and is like tied of Conan all the time now. It's just a matter of Light accepting the bizarre reality that the Black Organization fucking shrank Shinichi into a child. But like I said, Conan will also have issues coming to grips with the reality that a notebook can actually kill people. But for Light, he's the only one actually using a supernatural weapon and chilling with a Shinigami on a daily basis. I would say he's far more willing to accept this strange case and work from there. Now, at a certain point, if uh, if Conan is indeed taking the role of L and L's not here, if we assume that he gets the same police support that L did at the start, like he uh, they chose Conan or K Kogoro for this instance, then yeah, he would have he would have the police force for a bit. But as we saw in Death Note. They eventually become too threatened by Kira, and L is forced to create his own group. So there's going to, they're, they're not going to receive uh, significant help from the police after a while. And if nobody on the task force trusts Kogoro as much as they do L, assuming Kogoro is taking the lead here, they assume he's the greatest detective, then they're, if they don't trust him, they're not gonna, there's not going to be a task force at all after this, after this happens. I think Conan really needs the, the backup of the police in order to actually locate Kira. So I think this would be a heavy blow to his... Uh, to his help, to his like his assistance here. I also think that Light will learn that Conan is a threat before Conan learns that Kira may be Light Yagami. Like so, it's very likely that Light can just have Misa look at the detective, as well as Kogoro, Ran, and any other allies that Conan, that Conan has on his side, and then simply write down their names. She has her own death note and all, and this way Light never has to show up to begin with and risk being connected to the whole ordeal. Conan's death would definitely be attributed to Kira. But since they were never on Light's trail, like L was, their deaths don't result in Light's capture. I would also consider Light to be the more manipulative of the two. So in a conversation, uh, I see him leaving with more valuable information about Conan's identity. If they ever come face to face anyhow, which I doubt. I, I think Light's going to stay in the shadows. And I think he's going to pull it off. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. All right. All right. All right. All right. Very fair. Very fair. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so, for Conan, the biggest obstacle in Conan's way, as Max said, is his inherent disbelief in the supernatural, which means he won't believe in Kira. But the thing is, 
Light has improbability opposing his mindset too. In order for him to figure out Kona's identity, he will have to come to the unfounded conclusion that Kudo Shinichi has been de-aged somehow, a procedure that not even the people who gave him the fucking drug know about. Meanwhile, Kira proves his own existence pretty much on his own because it's heart attacks. It's not actual, like, it's not murders most of the time. As such, the reason that the, uh, the the police came to the conclusion that Kira would exi existed was because of how improbable the Kira case really was. And eventually it became public knowledge that, that he existed. That's why crime rates and such went down so much by the end of the series. Conan lives by the famous Sherlock Holmes quote, Once you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And in supplementary materials such as the spin-off book series, Japanese History with Detective Conan, he and the detective boy stumble across a time portal and embark on an educational adventure where they witness everything from the moon landing to prehistoric events. Dinosaurs and all. And Conan accepts this almost immediately. This means if the supernatural actually is put before him, he'll bite, and he'll do his best to, to stop Kira's killing spree. Meanwhile, Light has the bigger initial hurdle to clear, with Conan's identity being under wraps from all angles. But if he somehow gets to the point of mind games with Conan, I think Conan is more than capable of keeping up. Keeping up. Remember, L had pretty much figured out that Light was Kira by the time he died, unlike, and, but unlike L, I don't think Conan would be a direct threat to Bisa, or at, the, or at the very least, killing him wouldn't get her out of Suspicion's path. He's just a kid as far as she's concerned, so I wouldn't think Conan would wind up dead. Light has the eyes deal as a last resort, I suppose, uh, but if it gets to that point, Conan's already got him on the back foot big time. He was able to arrange an elaborate ruse to fool Amuro, a mind on par with his own, by having Akai appear in two places at once through voice changing technology, expert makeup work, and manipulative language. You could argue that there being two Kiras would make it pretty much impossible for Conan to pin Light down, but the exact same goes for Conan, who has transformed back into Shinichi several times throughout the series, and has means to do so again if he needs to. The most famous case of this was when he not only appeared as Shinichi, but Hybrida used voice-changing technology, as well uh, as well bleh, as well as makeup, to pull off a seamless Conan disguise that fooled everyone, including the likes of Ran, who had been living with him for several months at this point. Conan is an expert at catching criminals, at catching criminals out and luring them into manipulative tracks, traps. A lot of the time, the criminal has admitted that they've done it to Conan long before they even know. Light's good at disguising his true self, but Conan's seen through Kaito Kid's ruses before, who, who sports an IQ of 400. He even outsmarted Lupin on the third one time. He's got an eidetic memory, able to read, read entire medical document pages in less than a second, has debunked seemingly airtight alibis time and time again, and that's not even mentioning all of the other knowledge that you'd expect a detective to have, from, t from forensic to technological. There isn't really a corner of the world that Conan isn't knowledgeable of. To top this all off, Conan has access to a multitude of useful gadgets. Uh, from his turbo engine skateboard, which is constantly outpaced police cards, letting him show police cards, letting him show up to crime scenes long before the fuzz can. His glasses, which come equipped equip with high-tech audio fr frequency amplifiers, allowing him to hear incredible distances, and an infrared setting with a multitude of bugs for tracking and listening, listening to criminals from further away. Now, I am aware that the task force that L assembles probably wouldn't get involved. However, Conan has links to the FBI, uh, most notably the likes of Jody uh, and Akai, who are well aware that he is a genius and would likely be the actual people he's collaborating with. And I'll be honest, I think that they're infinitely more competent than L's task force. <laughs> At the very least, they don't have a dud like uh, fucking what's his face? What? Who's the guy that? Who's the guy that's fucking stupid in Death Note? Oh, oh, his name eludes me at the moment. <laughs> they don't have anyone like that. About. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, it's not like Conan hasn't got the help of the law enforcement, and I think that that's a much more useful branch of the law enforcement to have because they always work in secret, all have their names and identities completely under wraps and uh, uh, have shown to go to extremes before. I think that Akai is actually, uh, is actually willing to go over Conan's head and figure this out the more L-ish way. 
which is fucked, but if they do it and inform Conan of what they did, he'll be pissed, but he will have the information he needs. So yeah, I think that I think that Conan has what he needs to catch Light out eventually. It will take time, but unlike Light, I think that he has more means to actually pin him down, and Light doesn't really have any super duper airtight ways of proving his innocence besides Misa, who is actually just another Kira. So if he catches Misa, then that's uh, pretty good as well. That's pretty good for him. A strong argument. A strong argument for Conan. Mm. Let's see. What, 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 what's the sticking point okay, for you guys yeah. that we want? That you, you can really tell about? that. You can really tell that uh, that Willie really, really wants to talk about Conan. <laughs> I have been wanting to debate really? for him for so long. <laughs> <laughs> There, you can expect yeah. to see him on the show at some point. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want us to elaborate on any points here that we can start jumping off from? For me, I think, I mean, you made a pretty good point as to why, like, I think Conan's hurdle was understanding the supernatural. I just, I kind of, I just, I lost track a little bit. I want to kind of condense how you think he's going to get to light, like, specifically. Okay, so... The basic idea of Kira uh, that they that they came to was like they had to narrow him down by really extreme measures that I think the FBI gang from Conan would just do on their own. They have ties to the Black Organization and have let Amaro, uh, who's a member of the Black Organization, do some pretty fucked up stuff to stay like under under like wraps mm -hmm. as like an actual member. So I think that they could come to a similar conclusion to L that they need to do something well, did something you, that did you do drastic. The maneuver of trying to like air in every like a uh, region with a guy that they're going to kill. Hmm. Uh, they have to murder someone to actually I mean that's location. it's not as yeah. it's not as easy as x equals y. I think there are other ways to deduce that light is in Japan. Yeah, there are other ways. It doesn't yeah. have to be that but like mm -hmm. uh, weaseling light out is hard. He is fucking. He is like yes. smart about this shit. Yeah. What I'm more saying is that Conan's like Conan's in a like absolute refusal to murder. Mm -hmm. It is like that. It, it, that is the big sticking point. Absolutely. But he knows people who 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 would be willing to murder like and go over his head for it. Because at the end of the day, his victory would depend he, on them doing it though. Which I guess is fine. Yeah. It is. People they probably. They, they're probably in about the same position that the police force in um, Death Note are in. Like they, like they ha would have the same level of authority, if not more, yeah. and are in Japan as well. Um, so I, I think, I think, I think they'd come to a similar, similar conclusion. Yeah. Um, mm. So I, I'm a total Death Note noob. So <laughs> yeah, ever... you're not alone. <laughs> Okay. Did L ever figure out there was like a supernatural element to the Kira he, murders? He assumed. Or... Yeah. He, he was like, uh, he, he like he knew it was illogical. But he was like, uh, this is the only way uh, this makes sense. I have to go forth assuming this is true, and hopefully we'll find the real answer. But he does yeah, assume. Okay, but... He does like eventually. Down. Eventually, yeah, um, what's to face? Shit. Rem, was it Ram? Rem. Right. Yeah, yeah, Rem. Rem, yeah, Rem, Rem. Church. Yeah, and that's when it's, it's like completely him. confirmed. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. So yeah, that. So I guess if you didn't need to like outright know there was some some spooky stuff going on behind the scenes, for lack of a better term, then I, I guess that probably wouldn't well, be only, that much of a sticking point. By assuming it was true, and I don't know if Conan's gonna be. Oh, yeah. I think he might be a little more reluctant well, to assume it's true. I don't oh, know definitely. about that because yeah, I mean, all I did, all I did, kind of lay out that uh, yeah, Conan, Conan's whole eventually... mo is. What whatever whatever remains after you eliminate the impossible has to be the truth. Yeah. And eventually, mm -hmm. like, once he once he figures out that the Death Note is basically just used to kill people remotely through like whatever means that is written down in the book. I mean, there's only so many assumptions you can come to as to how how many different like murders with so many different variables yeah. could all be tied together under one serial killer. I do, I do think eventually Conan is going to be looking for a supernatural like kind of situation, but it will take, a, I think, I mean, longer than it took L to come to start doing that. Uh, um, well, that's fine. I think generally the thing that's going to help Conan out, though, is that he's not going to form this parasocial relationship with Light like L did. He's going to be at arm's length almost at all times, because I don't. There's there's zero reason that Light has any reason to become interested in like being around Conan. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, unless, like, yeah, if, 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 the only way he would, like, uh, be after Kona is if Conan, Kogoro, and Ran came snooping around, like, his general area and started investigating. That's the thing. I think Light totally has the potential to kill Kogoro and Ran, but at that point, he's just pissed Conan well, off more, and he's, he's going to be way more on his tail. Ideal, so if she just sees Conan, the name would be Shinichi. That's true, but does it technically count because his face is different to how it actually is? That is a good. That is true. Yeah, I, I that actually know. is. Like, that's what he looks like currently. It's, 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 how he look, it's, it's, a, it's an age serum, right? It turns him younger. Oh right, yeah. He, oh, so it I didn't think about that. That's, that's actually a very good point. How the fuck does the I Death Note work it, with de aging? I mean, it's, it's not <laughs> even like face, co- but it's, it's not even like Conan and Shinichi are like especially like, different because they are like yeah. people know like like they said Conan is related to Shinichi. Like they try and pass him off as like his cousin, and people just believe that because they look similar enough. That's true. It, yeah, his but... name is Shinichi, and that face goes along with that name, so I th- I assume it would work. Well, it's it's related to that name, but I don't know if people would use that name for that face. Does I don't know if that's the distinction. I, yeah. Oh, man, I don't, I don't, this has never happened in Death Note. Yeah, that kind of. I'm pretty sure we can't. Legally, his name is still Shinichi, right? He never gets so legally changed to Conan Edegawa, so I think. Yeah, it's just, like, that's um, an alias, essentially. Yeah, so yeah, like, think, calling him Shinichi would still work, and like, you're just accurate. imagining what he looks like now. Yeah, yeah that's, Why? Still, that's still just his name, and that's still just his face, even yeah. if it's like a little bit more aged. Okay. He has Why doesn't face. he. Why doesn't he get Misa to just kill everyone? Yeah, just kill the whole gang. Oh, no, 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 I mean, in, no, I, in the actual show. Because yeah. uh, at this point, they suspect that Light is Kira, and if they all die now, like, uh, and like Misa gets close, and then the second after Misa saw them, they died, he's, he's Kira, Light's Kira. They were already on Light by the time Misa, or Kira by the time, like, Misa got in the picture. Yeah. So the whole thing that he did to get out of it was to relinquish the death note and lose his memory so they couldn't tie it to him yeah it yeah whole I, I do i, I do remember that i well, do remember that point, they knew like they had a good strong feeling that light was Kira. i don't think if, i don't think if light be on his case by this point if light has gotten to the point though where he actually wants to kill kill conan specifically not not kogoro conan specifically then he has observed conan closely as is if and he and Co- and Conan and Conan makes a point to never have his appearance televised. He 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 always he always tries to keep his face away from cameras and such. So Light is going to have to actually observe crime scenes and such that Conan and Kogoro have shown up to. If, mm-hmm. if Light is un- under the assumption that Kogoro is the, the big detective they've got, he would probably want to kill people related de- around Kogoro who are helping him, not just Kogoro himself. He would want to wipe the slate clean on that right. entire research so conan would be a casualty in that like he would still have to take care of conan even if he doesn't see him as the big threat yet if he just thinks kogoro is taking out his entire squad would include but, conan would light even do that i don't think light would but, go out of his way to take wait, out he wouldn't have that. his name as, at that point. Yeah, as I mean, far as know. as far as kogoro like, is concerned conan is not a member of his squad he's just a brat who hangs around there yeah and what, like, would it be in yeah. light's nature to just kill a kid who hangs around like who yeah if just, it means, and, if it means not only is it not in his nature but that like fairly pins it on him yeah like it be- it, it, you mentioned that he would have to like go to the scene and like observe their faces if they're not televised if they spot him like hanging around a crime scene and like observing That's the people what? who are doing their business there oh, right. and yeah, and so that so- would make really easy to tie it to him like oh that guy's shown up all the times that people on our team are mysteriously dying i wonder who he could be well, the team would go uh, out in one fell swoop if he got all their names it wouldn't be like uh, gradually yeah. but he wouldn't kill sinichi yeah. and that's the whole point why wouldn't he come on because okay, that's, like, that's not be, because you know, lights lights whole mo is not like um killing like anybody who could tie like he's a serial killer yes but he's still like has some sort of sense of righteousness. He doesn't kill like a random. Yeah, his, his whole delusion is that he just wants to way. kill criminals. What Conan? What Conan appears as though? Because Conan uses technology that Light would have no way of knowing about because it doesn't exist in the Death Note world or even our world. Is a bow tie that perfectly allows him to replicate people's voices. As far as Light sees, because Conan always hides when he does the deductions and stuff. As far as Light will see, Conan won't even be at most of the actual crime scenes because he's already hiding and, and talking as Kogoro. Mm-hmm. Right, right. 
by the time by the time Kogoro is giving his spiel, if the general public are allowed to be around, which they usually aren't, at that point, Conan is is gone, and and you can't see him. If Kogoro gets taken out, then um, would Conan Conan would have to be the sole researcher there? But I don't know if that's how. I don't, I... Light would need to kill Kogoro in a way that would delete all of this all of his traces, yeah. which is what he did to the yeah. That's what he did to the entire task force. Be very hard to delete uh, all of Kogoro's cases, given that he's been involved in well no, over uh, 900 cases. Especially if that information has gotten to the FBI, because like Ollie said, all their information, all their identities are like top secret. I think Conan is getting involved in this case because the FBI have approached him because they know he's stupidly smart uh, for a kid. Right. Okay. I do think if the FBI can bring like do, do the shady stuff that uh, the L would have done. To weasel out like where light might be, and if assuming he doesn't uh, ever like like try to come after Conan specifically, if he doesn't assume him, I do think Conan could eventually I, it, be a major help in this case and ultimately survive till the end. I it's a more he, competent team and a more stealthy L. I think Conan's got this. Yeah, yeah. I think Conan. I, yeah. I would vote for Conan as well. Yay! <laughs> cool. No more L. <laughs> no more light. All you won with your fave. Uh, I tried <laughs> I tried to create a new world. Love to see it. <laughs> At the very Strong least, he fed... It is, it is very sad that he fed significantly better against Conan than he did Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because Sheldon's so much smarter than Conan, obviously. <laughs> no, Sheldon was just like, was yeah, so If Conan just crazy. went on Twitter and tried to cancel Light, he would have had it in the bag. <laughs> that was like, uh, next, we got a, got a, a GA's debut. Yes, the yeah, beginning. for... For my yeah. favorite character of all time. Bubsy the Bobcat! <laughs> Alright, so this is Bubsy versus Pepsi Man. Scenario. Bubsy tries to get a can of Pepsi from a vending machine, but using a very... some dynamite, saying, What could possibly go wrong? The vending machine explodes, making everyone angry and thirsty for a Pepsi. Pepsi Man arrives and begins to chase down Bubsy in order to stop him from destroying all Pepsi. The only problem is that because of how uncontrollable their speeds are, they end up hurting themselves more than each other. It's okay. It's a chase. Yeah. Uh, so okay, Larry, you're going Pepsi, Pepsi Man? Yeah, Larry's yeah, for Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man. Okay, well, Bobsy goes first. So, DJ, yeah. let's hear it. Okay, so... The main the main linchpin of why I think Bubsy has this pretty handily is the fact that the scenario is a chase specifically because um, not only is his speed not as uncontrollable anymore after the newest game that he has it's it's more like a general three D plat not a two D platformer rather where he just kind of runs around at a normal speed um, the fact that it specifically starts with him blowing up a, a Pepsi machine and the fact that there are people around that wanted Pepsi clues me into the fact that this is taking place in like an urban setting where it's going to be like like f at least some kind of a large city where there's going to be plenty of places for Bubsy to kind of dart around and escape Pepsi Man, which is going to be especially easy because he has quite a few more power-ups than Pepsi Man does, which can help him get away. He has uh, shirts that can give him shields, that can make him invincible, and most importantly, he has one that can turn him completely invisible. So once he puts that on, he really just needs to kind of dart into an alley and kind of climb up a wall with his claws. And Pepsi Man's not going to know, have any idea of where he went. So at that point, he pretty much just wins. And it's going to be pretty easy for him to do that because he's vastly smarter than Pepsi Man is. In the good ending of Bubsy 3D, he actually builds a functioning rocket ship out of just scrap metal by looking at plans that the Woolies had left behind. So he, his intellect is on a scale that uh, Pepsi Man cannot even comprehend. <laughs> oh my god. And, so, uh -oh. <laughs> and I mean, it, ultimately, even if push comes to shove and all of that fails for some reason, he could just fucking teleport away with his portable hole. Like, that's just a thing that he has, according to the instruction booklets in the original games. So he can just, like, throw a hole at a wall and just dive, like, teleport somewhere else, and Pepsi Man could not follow him. So... Yeah, ultimately, I just think Bubsy is, has way too much that would make it way too hard for Pepsi Man to ever actually catch him. And that's my argument. Okay, right. pretty good. Nice. Pretty good. Okay, so I think I think Pepsi Man's got this. For one, 
when, when, when you if, if there's one thing Pepsi man is known for, it's winning. He's literally known for winning from point A to point B. Every time he hears the hears the call of someone thirsty, he's he's always just darts in there. This is also especially seen in the in the uh, video game where he's just like running around the entire city. You're talking about like Bubsy being able to like dart around, dart around and be able to go like go like on building tops and such. But Pepsi Man in the games could do that too, being able to dodge it, dodge like just multiple people, just vehicles, go on tops of out one trucks and boulders. He even was able to do all of this with like a trash can on his head, so he literally could not see, and he was still so still able to dodge completely every everything just fine. Also, the thing is, though, I think the fact that Pe Bubsy like destroy is destroying Pepsi is actually gonna make him public enemy, enemy number one because. <laughs> In the video game, there was literally a quote unquote violent out like like a, just everyone was like a, everyone just started going into a violent like just a violent anger anger and like they were, were hurting each other in the game because like the Pepsi computer like wasn't working. This this was actually a plot point in one of the in the one of the levels. So people might just actually like just start chasing after Bubsy. So it's not just Pepsi man; he's going to have to worry. Pepsi is going to have to, to worry about. Pepsi Man is also just shown to work with people like the police and the military, giving them giving in the games, giving them even more people to try to hunt down, hunt, hunt down Bubsy. I forgot my next point. <laughs> <laughs> I had something. Okay, intelligence. Pepsi Man is also just also much more than you, you give him give him credit for because like like at the end of that level he was able to fix the entire Pepsi Pepsi computer computer like pretty quickly quickly he's been he's helped helped with space program programs before for maybe not definitely not on Paul like building a ship but he's not like totally outclassed in terms of intelligence plus it doesn't help that like Bubsy's like just so overconfident with himself he'll probably be taunting Pep Pepsi man which would give Pepsi man more opportunity instead of like just going away like right off the bat he's going to try maybe just taunt Pepsi man which would give Pepsi man more opportunities to to tackle him and catch it and have him pay for his crimes against Pepsi and uh, yeah, I think I think that's that's where my argument ends. All right. I just okay. think he's, yeah. Okay. So on the on the topic of Bubsy being arrogant and trying to taunt Pepsi Man, I feel like that kind of conflicts with your earlier point about like all the people around Bubsy, like in the city, like getting angry and trying to chase him. Because if all of a sudden he has a giant mob running after him, why would he not just try to take the easiest way out? Like he could just put on his, his invincibility shirt and just plow through all the all the average humans trying to get in his way, and like even even in the newest game, like his dive attack can just smash through giant rock walls. He's tearing through all of those like like that fat couch guy who just laughs and eats chips <laughs> while drinking Pepsi and laughing at the TV screen. That guy's getting turned into fucking Swiss it cheese and tries to grab Pubsy. It is is Bubsy going to be willing to do that though? Because that murder. that sounds like sure he would. Yeah, no, 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 he's, no, he's absolutely public. He has, no, he has no problem like just murdering every woolly he okay, sees. Okay, woolies, those are like, I, I, I'm I'm like really they're just kind of sitting around actually, in the environment in his games. They're not even. They're like Kirby enemies. They're not really doing yeah, anything to him. Didn't the Lily like... steal his body of yarn? He stole my golden yeah. body of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. with, I'm like that, that, honest, just, I'm... that just goes even more so like if the military were to get involved like oh my god things have really gone wrong he just jumps into his hole and fucking leaves As far, <laughs> like, like jumping into the whole thing is the one thing that keeps me on his side but I do not think that he would go on a murdering spree I, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't necessarily have to kill all those people if he just like yeah. put on his, his invincibility shirt they just wouldn't be able to like hurt him in any way <laughs> and even then like he can just still put on his invincibility shirt and just like just get away in the ur in the urban jungle like they wouldn't be able to follow him. And if anything, that would make it harder for Pepsi Man to find him because he'd have to wade through a giant crowd of people. 
If this takes place at the Pepsi Man City, literally everything is trying to kill these two. Inclu yeah. Pepsi Man is fucking is a relentless game. No one cares that he's running around. They'll just swing fucking shit around. Giant Pepsi cans will start falling and chasing him down. I never well. actually read the yeah, scenario yeah. prior to this. This is a matchup coming. Pepsi can run, right? Like, what the fuck? What? Like, I think Pepsi Man can only one, can't he? Like, yeah, can he all just run? Do is really yeah, run. Like, he has no run. unique powers outside of that. Like, he he can summon Pepsi, I guess. He can summon like, cans playing? of Pepsi. He can't really manipulate Pepsi in any yeah, way outside he just of makes that. Cans. I thought he was in a fighting well, game. Just... Yeah, he's he's no, 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 he's in Pepsi Man yeah. is in fighting is in fighting Vipers. He would be able to to if anything. Assuming I was assuming he can even get his closing. hands on Bubsy, which again he would not be able to. I don't think he's got like I said. He's able to able to know exactly where to dodge where the trap's gonna do. That's because he's going towards a Pepsi machine, though. Like, if Bubsy becomes invisible and just, like, walks past him and goes the other direction, Pepsi Man's just gonna keep running straight ahead in the last place he saw Bubsy. No, 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 <laughs> like, when he's, no, when he's running down the street, like, he gets a trash can on his head, and he's still just dodging and still able yeah, to run. Like, yeah, like, he's like, 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 all the levels in the Pepsi turn... Man game are just, like, straight lines, aren't they, as yeah, far as I know? Yeah, can he turn around? Like, can he fucking turn He would have no idea where Bubsy is. Yes, and, like, can, with Bubsy's turn, superior yes. mobility and, like, his gliding, like, he can just float so far away in the time it would take Pepsi Man to even realize that it's, he gave him the I slip. I don't... Well, as... Pepsi Man can turn, by the way. No, he's not just stuck uh, running one can direction. Why, why does it business? Yes, why does Bubsy just fucking murder him? I, I, exactly. I, 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 I like that. I like that. See, he puts on his invincibility shirt and punches him in the face, yeah, and Pepsi Man yeah, is just fucking, fucking obliterated. And calls it a day. <laughs> I, I feel like, like it, Man, you I not, do feel this, this, you this scenario kill. is just tilted way more towards Bubsy than it is Pepsi it's, Man. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's impossible for Pepsi Man to win in some cases, but Bubsy just has way more options in this specific scenario. I agree. I agree. I think no, Bubsy, I'm, I'm, I'm Bubsy. Yeah, I think I think Bubsy wins. I think wins. Bubsy wins. <laughs> I really. I first debate. Let's fucking go. Right. I think right, we can right. right. This one. It pains me oh, to say that Bubsy should win. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was. It, uh, it just wasn't that fair but, for Pepsi. Yeah, Pepsi a lot of people really expected just me to doesn't say have here. that much, really. Yeah, like, yeah, like he's, he's, he's one of the. He's one of. I know, like most ma food mascots, he's like he doesn't have really have that much espresso yeah. about him. He gets so many cans out of nowhere. Yeah, and see, I, I, I happened to watch this like, really great like, video by this guy named Larry Winwood, where he he talked about how he wanted Pepsi. Yeah, I said, I said, I said, oh, I, I, I let him manipulate soda in the animation I made for him, but he can't actually do that. And I was like, mm, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just, oh, just, just lied, Larry. You should have just lied to me. You get time. Oh, you got to freeze time. You get ton people in the Pepsi. Speaking of liars, speaking of liars, we got a Biff and Adam coming up with yes, oh yeah. Yeah. This is, this this is, spy. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Scenario. Ooh. The imp were confronted by a sinner who recently died. Their target is the spy. Dressed in red and need to kill the spy during a TF2 capture the flag game. Will they kill the red spy or will they die in the crossfire? I have not seen Hell of a Boss. I don't know what the fuck uh, is going to happen here. Well, hopefully, I can enlighten you. Right, you're go Adam's going for Hell of a Boss team, and Biffweed's going for the Spy. Yep. All right, you start, Adam. Yeah. Okay, so I thought this was just like a straight up con confrontation, but the fact that the Spy is basically in a game and going to be preoccupied with that, I think that just makes this. I think this just makes it even easier for IMP. First of all, I'll, I'll get into the other points. This is basically a a three against one scenario. Four technically, if you want to count Luna, I guess, but she doesn't typically go along for the murders. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna bank on that. But yeah, I think in the heat of the action, the spy is definitely not going to see three little red demons coming after him to kill him, and that'll all it will take is for them to just. Wait for an opening, because I, I know the spy is definitely sneaky, and he's definitely going to disguise himself, but he's not like that for the whole game, I know. So, I think as long as they're 
just low and waiting for an opportunity, then they'll have they'll have they'll they will get that perfect opportunity to kill him on the spot there. And if things do devolve and they get more into the action, I think they will be just fine. First of all, uh, imps are definitely not as resilient as other like has been versus demons, but they can still survive like big explosions, getting shot and stabbed. It, it, it's merely a flesh wound to them. So, so I don't think they really have anything to worry about. I, I don't know what life's going to do to really, to really do serious damage at, at worst. I think they'll probably, one of them's probably just going to say, oh, harder daddy, as is typical uh, for Adam. Um, Adam for the human. Uh, that was yeah, not necessary for you to say. Can I win? Can, never can, say can, we, can we just let me win already? Like, this is, this is a, lot, that is a hey, point against brand. you, Adam. You got to win me back. No, okay, but anyway, furthermore, uh, these guys, we've seen how how skilled at killing they are, especially when synchronized, because there was, was the Goated Cherubs episode where they were doing, they were really fighting to the best of their abilities, and it eventually ended, by accident granted, with the old guy they were trying to kill dying. The Cherubs lost, and in the one episode, they were like, and they, like Millie and Luna, they broke into like this government facility to save Blitz and Moxie, and together they just slaughtered a bunch of like the highly trained, or I assume highly trained, government spies that were there specifically to like capture demons. And they showed that they also have like hammer space in both those instances because they were just pulling out weapons left and right, no rhyme or reason. And furthermore. I think even if they do end up getting quote unquote killed, I think it has been confirmed by Vivi herself that if a demon dies to not a holy weapon, which I don't think Spy has or any of the mercs, while while they're on Earth, they just get sent right back to hell and they can go about their day. So as long as they still have this grimoire, there's nothing stopping them from just coming back and keep trying until they eventually get the spy. And that that's my that's my argument. All right, nice. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, uh, main point I want to bring up is Spy. Um, his weaponry is just far superior to what the imps will likely be bringing. Like they've got this bag with with a ton of uh, guns and blades and explosives in it, but they hardly ever bring that with them. Like Luna only brought it in to um, save them from. The demon hunters because it was like an explicit um life or death situation that they absolutely needed it for typically they travel light with just a couple guns and the spies guns just tend to to be better or like mainly in regards to his knives he has several like um the spicicle which upon backstab just immediately freezes the target completely solid like, and he has several uh, other weapons, including a knife and a frying pan. That upon killing, um, or uh, upon a backstab or just general killing blow, they will uh, transmute the target into Australian. Uh, so he's got, and, and just generally, backstabs are an instant kill. Like there's there's nothing the imps are really going to do to defend against that. Um, and on the flip side. The spy himself in the comics, he has stated after several uh, after battles to have like lost liters worth of blood and still just kept going. Um, I think a main point Adam brought up is they're going to be relying on the element of surprise, but like people have tried to jump spy before. Like there was a guy, uh, there was a guy in a prison cell with him and Scout. And Spy and Scout were talking to each other, and the guy was sneaking up behind Spy to try and kill him with a pen. And by the time by the time Scout turned around, Spy had already killed him. Like he wasn't even looking at the guy approaching him. And by the time Scout had had turned around to see Spy, he'd already silently taken the pen out of his hand and stabbed him in the back between panels. Um, I uh, forgot to mention going over his weaponry. There is um one of his one of his other daggers called the Conniver's Kunai, I believe, uh, regenerates health upon a backstab, so he has uh, more ways to sustain himself. And um, his cloaking gives him the 
edge in stealth, obviously, compared to the imps, who generally are a lot less subtle in their methods of approach. Like, they will just drop a dumpster on someone and and not care. Um, <laughs> spy, uh, spy has weapons like uh, the cloak and dagger, which, if he doesn't move, he can just stay cloaked indefinitely, like, find a hiding spot, plan out a method of attack, and then run back into things. Or something like the dead ringer, which, upon taking a hit... It will automatically cloak him, drop a fake corpse, and so one, they, they'll have thought they've won, and then he'll have the chance to get the jump on them. And I don't think it's a stretch to say he's the more skilled in hand-to-hand fight uh, combat. Like um, The TF2 mercs were chosen by Redmond and Blue Tark because they are the best of the best like uh, across all mercenaries in the world. And compared to the M2, like, they're competent in a fight, but it's not like they've devoted their entire lives to it. And I think that's generally the main list of points I wanted to bring up. Um, okay. I thought All of right. a few things while I was listening. Um, you mentioned how Imp, uh, this being during the middle of a, of a TF2 match, is actually a bad thing for Spy. I I actually think the opposite. I think the fa- if, even if even if the other mercs don't like Spy, um... The, they are trying to fight for this plot of land. So if they see that their teammate is distracted and is taking on another fight with these people, the other mercs might actually just jump in and come to his aid. It also, also this, the thing with um, them, Vivzi saying that they can come back to life. The same thing with TF2 characters. Apparently in the comics, the respawn okay. is also coming. No, actually, I'll argue, I'll argue against that, actually. It is exclusively only a thing for medic and scout okay okay um because wow. uh, medic surgically removed the other mark souls and added them to his own and scout this is going to sound like i'm shit posting scout if he dies he will be brought back to life by god because he has not yet slept with every woman on the planet what? okay that's, all, that's what that I'm definitely doing. sounds like tf2 i got it i gotta be honest yeah. no, it scout is literally like god's okay. gift to man it seems like the spy is a lot more like Maybe competent to the other gangs of imp, like not that they're incompetent, but he seems like really trained. Yeah, like you've seen it, the Meet the Spy trailer where like he they infiltrates have, yeah, the blue yeah. base and like manages mm-hmm. to play a. a, a he was literally able to thing. fool the enemy spy. Could could he? Yeah. Like, could he like, uh, honest... like make himself look like one of the imps themselves? Yes, because the disguise. Yeah, 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 I don't but... see why not. Would any of them fall for it... the uh, the kill him, not me? I'm the real one. Fucking shtick. I feel like Millie. Really... I feel like Million Mock. I don't think they've ever kind of because they know each other too well. well. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, if they did that, why yeah, not? Yeah, that's the thing. The oh, spy has never met these guys. Also, sorry. I want to point out: Spy has fought and defeated people bigger and stronger than him, like Heavy and Soldier. Whereas in fights with, um, like Striker, um, Moxie and Millie uh, uh, had to. Uh, come prepared with more weaponry, and even then, they only just barely won by taking advantage of a giant stone statue that Striker had. Uh, and when Blitz and Moxie fought him the first time, they only had him dead to rights because they managed to get uh, their hands on his demon royalty killing gun while Striker was completely unarmed. It definitely seems like Spy still should getting the, still getting the win up. One, though. Like, yeah. Sorry, brother. Sorry. I- it seems like Spy should handily win this. It just seems the issue is like, does he have a way to stop them from coming back? If that's not, I mean, would, 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 would transmutation it? stop them yeah, from coming back? Like, I don't know well, if that would do I looked, anything. I looked the this problem up. Is if, like, if we assume, if we assume like like he does act like like this is taking place like in the middle of a catch the flag thing, so Spy would actually just have like hope of his teammate. Soldier, soldier, soldier in particular has something called the Holy Hand Grenades. Oh, oh boy. but that that soldier, well, that's, not yeah, that, spy. That's not that's not Imp versus uh, yeah. Spy anymore. Well, that's Imp versus Imp, Team Fortress Two. Yeah, we're just yeah, assuming that they're the infiltrating a run yeah. of Team Fortress Two. Yeah, Wait, I mean that this yeah, this is I just think, this is just something with a scenario. Yeah. Also, I feel like even if they can infinitely respawn, Blitz is so fucking lazy. He's just gonna quit if like he has to keep trying to kill the spy. Well, also, yeah, like, like, like if, this, if the spy tricks him enough times with his cloaking and like disguises, he might just be like, "All right, fuck this. This is more trouble than this contract is worth." I, I well, feel like there there wouldn't on, be any. I'm what's saying Adam something. Trying to say? uh, no, I'm sorry. I, uh, well, you say that, but again, in the cherubs episode, they uh, the old guy they were gonna kill was gonna die anyway. It was just because the 
cherubs were blessing him okay. and they already got paid and he spent his on a horse figure that he was still determined to to kill him and i feel like with blitz's pride that's going to be enough motivation to keep coming back especially if the ta if the spy is taunting him as he's no known to do but it did make a good point earlier i think it was like talked over a little bit but if both yeah, sorry. uh but if the spy no, no no i don't think it was you but um if the spy disguised himself as, in particular, Moxie, I think Blitz would just shoot them both. Because Moxie yeah. will come back. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think Spy <laughs> shouldn't do that. Yeah, right. That's probably a bad Yeah. Thing. That's true. Also, he like, doesn't know these people well. If he well, first and sees that they come back, he probably would not try to pull oh, that. Oh, also, mm -hmm. actually, I, I'm actually kind of swinging to the other side now. If, uh, if um, oh. the imps do lose... Then Luna would probably come into play, and she can make human disguises for them, which could definitely, well, which would be about. Well, she actually, on the fly. If, if if it if it starts to come down to that, like it's given them more prep time, wouldn't that give Spy more time to like prepare? Like if they're mm -hmm. starting to come back, he I mean, I'm assuming he might think I'm, that they've just given up. Yeah, if they've yeah. just disappeared. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean, like if he starts yeah, killing he them no over and over. Leave. He has he, no reason like, to believe these imps are going to keep coming back. Right? And if we're assuming that uh, Spy is going to be able to contact other TF2 members, if the imps go back and get Stolas, he could just turn oh, them into stone. Yeah. I mean, that's granted he doesn't oh, yeah. show up anyway if they're about to die. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah Stolas, Stolas would totally, if someone if someone tried to hear his big dick okay. blitz, he would okay, totally... No. <laughs> 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 Brandon, uh, Brandon, have you kept up with the current episodes of Hell of a Boss? Because Stolas is currently in the hospital. <laughs> Well, that's okay. All right, Scout can't be here because uh, this is him when he's bleeding on the ground. This is him when he's bleeding on the ground. You see. <laughs> he's he's not sleeping with every woman on the planet. <laughs> also, wait, if you can't scale because I left him in a full body cast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Stolas could just turn him to stone. Oh. Yeah, no, if, Stol if Stolas comes in, then I think Spice Fox. Well, like, uh, well, the only, the last big argument I would have, because I can't see it uh, potentially working, is the transmutation. Like, does that affect, like, would that stop their soul? Is there anything about messing with the soul there? If not, then, so, yeah. No, so wait, how does the no, transmutation it, work it, in, in the game? Does, it literally just, like, it he stabs like, him in the back and they turn to ice does, or a Does it have to kill them to transmute? Like, turns them to ice? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, so I was thinking like, just like, like, stab, like, 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 or something and stop them from moving. It either it either freezes them or it turns them into yeah. into Australian. Uh, Australian, which is basically just gold. Like, like they just turn uh, into gold. Okay, but didn't okay. didn't, didn't uh, Adam mention that they've been stabbed before and not been killed? Like, but these are like instant killbacks. So these were like I'm, his normal like, stabs don't guys, like kill normal them. people. He's yeah, he's he's probably most I mean, are, are imps' anatomy is that much different from humans to where the backstab wouldn't be as effective? I don't know. I'm pretty sure they've been stabbed in the back before, and it is painful, but like it, it doesn't kill them. I don't. Th I don't believe. I think Millie I has been okay in one episode. Millie got her arm or leg broken or something, but she was the oh, one yeah. doing the stabbing there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean. Oh. I, I think back to like one of the newer episodes where Millie fucking kills everyone in a wedding. Like, I just think back to that is like, they they may not be as skilled, but like, <laughs> if they're all on a similar like level to one another, oh, I think wait. I think eventually they'd overwhelm. Awesome. And God forbid if Spy kill. My, uh, oh, sorry, my, my how redundant the get the Mercs argument is because Blitz can just fucking ask the blue team, help him out. This oh, is yeah. true. Yeah. Oh, God yeah. for God. Do you think they would? Yeah, like, to, 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 to kill spy from a yeah. Yeah, 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 they're like, they're like, they don't need an excuse to Penny, fight the red team. An enemy of, an yeah, enemy yeah, of my enemy is my friend. Like well, isn't to isn't to most to of imps, aren't most of imps like colored red? They might think that they're still on the other team, even if they're fighting. Oh, that's, that's true. true. That's actually they're not, true. They're not supposed to um to like be seen by humans like the act of then again they can disguises. Yeah, but they don't have oh, those. Mean, yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. They just, oh, yeah, they just they're gonna have blue disguises. Hey, Luna. Well, Luna, Luna is <laughs> one. The other blue. three don't. I mean, they Luna can make oh, disguises. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I saw Luna. Still part of the team here. Oh, well, they do still have. I mean, you can still tell they're imps, but 
I mean, granted, it seems humans and Hasman are kind of stupid. They can't really yeah, tell. I mean, they have just, they have humans, just like, humans. present themselves as I mean, before. TF2's humans aren't that fucking smart either. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that is true. Blitz, that is true. Blitz, Blitz put on stupid, I would say. Like, they're stupid when it's funny for them to be. Blitz put on big ears and everyone thought he was Brandon I would say Rogers. they're stupid most of the time, not just cartoon. <laughs> That's that probably stupid. fair. I don't I don't TF2 that much. I, I don't Well, really it sounds to like, me like uh, Spy can't even permanently kill them, so eventually Spy uh, would lose. I, I, yeah. I'm going to be voting for Imp. I, I'm I think, think so. to Imp, yeah. I'll be yeah. honest. If, if, yeah, if they have infinite tries to keep coming back, then yeah, I, I don't think Spy can keep going forever. Yeah. Especially oh. if, like, because in this scenario, they have the fucking jump on him. Yeah, I can argue against, like, oh, he, he is, um, someone had the jump on him, but that was, like, a dude with a pen in a prison cell. These are demons with guns who can just shoot him from afar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And during the middle of a game, no less. Yeah, uh, he's going to be mis Sorry, Mr. Bivid, your perfect record is gone. <laughs> I mean, I was just glad to have it for a while, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Thank you. Thank Adam, you. you're not only on a streak, but you ended the perfect record. You've now got well, the exact same wrong, record yeah. as Brandon. <laughs> well played, Gregory. I do know this episode uh, thank is, you. is a little, it's a, is, is a tad long, but we got one more that can either end very quickly or end or go on for a while. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, what, what could, it? it has the potential to go on for a while, because I still have some some notes here. But I guess. Well, okay. if it's if, if it's still in the, the episode, that you we know can make it another point been, five. It hasn't been edited. Yeah. Into another now, point five. the scenarios they gave us, we kind of switched. Should I still read their scenario just out of respect? Yeah, why not? Sure. It was. They <laughs> no, have we'll it too. the heroes of Aincrad versus the Lyoko Warriors. It's sort of online. It's called Lyoko. The scenario we got was on April thirteenth, uh, two thousand nine. A new game was released to the public. Being a weird base builder RPG other shit game known as Suburb, this game wound up in the hands of multiple worlds and caused all sorts of convoluted bullshit. In these two universes, however, copies of the game wound up in the hands of two groups of six virtual warriors. One being a group of VR gamers that had survived being locked inside a VR game known as Sword six, Art Online. I just realized he said that. <laughs> While the other was a group of students that virtualized themselves into a cyber world known as Lyoko to battle the evil AI uh, Xana. Both groups weren't entirely certain what the new game was, but they opted to try it out, and were soon enough taken to a session within the medium. Which group will be able to beat this uh, new game world and claim the prize at the end? TLDR, who survives Homestuck. I don't know what Homestuck is. Yeah, we don't know what Homestuck is, and I realize they said six, so that means I get William, and that makes things a lot easier. Great. Um, but we uh we we not uh, we switched the scenario in two different ways. Uh, should we? I uh, will just say for the, in this instance, in this uh, light speed, didn't we switch it to Bed Wars? Yeah, we switched it to Bed Wars. Minecraft Bed Wars, everybody. So hey, that's right Bed now. Wars. So bed I'm, Wars. <laughs> I'm backing up the Heroes of Minecraft. I got Kirito in the gang, and DJ has the Lyoko Warriors. I do. I haven't seen Code Lyoko yet, but I've been learning about it. I've been preparing. And I haven't been watching Sora online. I made it through the Aincrad stuff, which is all I need to know for this debate, I guess. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just like, I'm letting you know what I'm basing off of before I start this fucking thing. You said that's all they need? All right, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm, specific I'm stuck with the years of Aincrad. So, all right. What I what I'm gathering here, I know I, I would think that Kirito and Asuna probably have the better sword fighting skills than most of the characters in Lyoko. They all appear to have different weapons than usual. I think there's one guy that's got a sword, but one of them's got like a projectile. One of them uses has a cloning abilities, and the other has telekinesis. I think they're usually doing something other than just like basic ass sword fighting. So. Using the swords in Minecraft or their own swords, I assume. I assume we're giving them arsenals from their games if we allow that. Do, would you think we would allow that before I continue? Are we going to let them have Yeah, we can, we can allow their arsenals, yeah. Okay, so yeah, if Kirito, Kirito and Asuna have their swords, I assume they'll have some of the usual healing items that were in Aincrad. They'll have some of those. If I've got the whole squad here, I do have... Um, there was a girl who had a, a dragon that could breathe like healing spray, and that's going to be really helpful for, like, if they were in danger of like losing their hearts. Um, I do, I, I, I've seen Kirito and Asuna be a little more strategic, or at least, I, I've known them to be really smart, and I, I think their characters, 
within uh, Code Lyoko who are a little more immature, like Odd and Ulrich. They seem to be pretty immature and kind of dick around a little more. I don't think anybody in Kirito's squad besides maybe Klein, like, fuck around that much. And even then, like, Klein's a jokester. I didn't really see him fuck up. He started leading his own group. We didn't really follow it, but he does lead his own group of people. He's like a leader. They've all got some decent... Like, Kirito, Asuna, and Klein have good leadership skills. The others are just generally skilled in the game. They survived long enough to get out of Minecraft by the end of it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an overall very solid team over here, like, like smarts-wise, while there's the two like immature people on Lyoko's side. And there's also... I did find out... I don't know the exact context. Uh, you... You said uh, there's William is on your team, right? Yeah, well, it looks Correct. like he is. Yeah. This would be William. Yeah, okay. Uh, from what I saw, at a certain point, William is just kind of angsty and eventually gets possessed by the villain. So I don't know if he's not, supposed to... Not a case him. anymore. Not the case anymore? Okay, well, just scratch no. that then. I wasn't... Yeah, I wasn't sure. That's just what I had heard. But, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of competence, a lot of good uh, weapons. If, if, they, if they retain abilities from Aincrad... Kirito does have, like, actual superhuman senses. He can t tell people are sneaking up on him. So nobody's coming under the fucking place to dig up and destroy the bed right from under their noses. They're going to they're gonna make it secure. Gonna you have not explained bed wars at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, whatever. It's we'll fine. be here forever if we have to do that and this. Yeah. Yeah, but they're sneaky fucking... They're sneaky guys. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, you know, Kirito's got a, good, a certain sense for people that are sneaking up on him. And so does Asuna, actually. That's the thing that she shows later. So they can both do good at that. I think overall, just a lot of competence on this team. Hmm. Okay. So, the thing with the Lyoko Warriors is that all six of them, as I've learned just now, um, all six of them are fairly competent at teamwork. Um, you've mentioned that Odd and Ulrich were probably immature, but o the only one that's slightly immature is odd and Ulrich is pretty serious most of the time he just doesn't mind dicking around with his friends when the opportunity comes up but he's usually quiet and reserved same with yumi so i think the thing with the lyoko warriors is that they're way too varied and have too much shit that they're not going to be able to deal with so if we're doing with like with the Einkrad art then they don't have yui which actually puts a huge amount of um favors for the lyoko warriors for one um you did not mention Ailita, which i feel Ailita is going to crush bed wars for one she has flight she has energy barriers and on top of that she has access to the direct programming of wherever she's in maybe you can argue that since this is bed wars she might not have those the same abilities but just saying that like okay they still have retained their state there's computer abilities regardless she can like sing and cause an amount an amount of like abnormalities in the programming so yeah good luck getting to diamonds if they don't fucking exist <laughs> on top of that we have jeremy who's like the brains of the operation he usually sits outside he doesn't really have like that many combat skills but his hacking skills have been comparable to people like xana like a literal supercomputer and he's been able to beat her or beat it and all of xana's replicas so he had so we're working with a team that has Virtually, like, two supercomputer geniuses on their team, since Aelita is just as smart as Jeremy at times. Now, as far as combat skills go, um, Ulrich is an actual sword fighter. He's a martial artist. Um, he's trained in sword fighting. He's trained in, like, actual fighting. Yumi knows karate. The only one that's kind of untrained is Odd, but Odd's whole thing is that he's the sniper of the group. So he has laser arrows, which, which can snipe people from dozens of yards away, and... If they have, like, access to fireballs, then I don't see any reason why Odd wouldn't be able to pick that up. Future Odd has Future Sight. Um, Obviously, I probably wouldn't give that to him because he lost that, like, midway within Season 1 for just no reason. They just kind of forgot he had the ability. <laughs> and then he had an episode it's like, whatever happened to fucking Future Sight? Oh, yeah, like, it got deleted. <laughs> so, but the, the whole thing is that he gets shields in return. So he has shields and, um, and a... And some laser arrows, which can fire at a very long distance. The whole thing with, like, Code Lyoko is that whenever they're having to deal with the monsters, they have Xana's eye, and they have to pinpoint on that eye to do actual damage. So all of them are pretty good at just kind of calculating weaknesses. And with with Jeremy on the on the computer telling them what um, what's going on, and with them communicating to each other, because they are like a tight new like a tight knit group of friends, they're going to be able to communicate just very accurately how you would do an actual game of Bed Wars. And they're really good at like jumping from island to island and not trying to fall off like the cliff and having to respawn. 
we see this like within the mountain range sector within Kolioko. We see this in the ice sector where explicitly like wrong and the jungle sector where explicitly wrong moves would mean in their permanent death. Since if they fall in, if they fall into the digital sea, which is kind of like the, um, the bounding box of each Lyoko world, they won't respawn back into the real world. They'll just fucking die or at least be lost in that sea until someone can reprogram them. So I think they just like have the skills necessary for, um, bed wars and if there's any sort of like hacking or new things they need to create on the fly they have Alita and Jeremy to do that and on top of that that's not even getting to their vehicles each of them has like a vehicle Alita has flight Odd has a hoverboard Ulrich has a motorcycle that can also fly Yumi has a floating scooter so they just have kind of everything and then when you add on top with Ulrich um or not Ulrich, William, who can also have, like, super sprint, same with Ulrich, and then his smoke can paralyze people. Even if they try to, like, approach them, there's a means for them to just stay still for a while while they just get to the bed. Okay. And I don't think... Oh, yeah, and there's also telekinesis. They can just... And since Yumi has been shown to, like, telekinetically move large ma- land masses, I can see, like, an, an opportunity while um, Einkrad's trying to bridge back. Yumi just fucking moves and they die anyways. Okay. So yeah, there. That's my initial argument. All right. Ugh, for Kolioko. Now, you you mentioned uh, Yui would not be part of the Iron Crowd team, but isn't she in Iron Crowd? She does show up there and fights in that in that world. Why does she, she fight? Team? Yeah, she does. She, she oh, I thought we were monster. talking about the first arc. I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know she. Was she creates there. a force field. She can fly and shit. And she gets like a giant, huge sword to defeat the high level boss. Now here's the thing. Um, Yui is just like one like artificial intelligence program that's tied to the game. Xana's a whole fucking supercomputer and Jeremy's outsmarted that. Right, yeah. So like if we're talking about like who has like the better hacking capability is Team well, Leoko. Well, hack in the thing. game. Kirito did hack into Sword Art Online to specifically preserve you. Yeah, because he knew the programming. He was a beta tester. Right, yeah. So, so he knew well, he was well, these guys know yeah, the programming that... of the Minecraft world. Yeah, uh, he would not I be think, able to uh, hack into Hypixel. Jeremy, Jeremy has been able to know how to hack and build like invention just by looking at it. Okay. Like the dude's super fucking smart. All right, that's, um, yeah, that's... There was an episode where Jeremy was literally trapped. Like Xana was so fucking tired of Jeremy's shit because he it they did not know how to like get around Jeremy to kill the rest of Lyoko warriors. So one of Xana's solution was to trap him inside of a virtual, an alternate virtual universe (laughs) where he was the only one that knew what the fuck was going on. And Jeremy was able to like pick up on the minute details of the world to (laughs) sort of break out of it. (laughs) Oh, that's good. (laughs) All right. um, I do have, I I wasn't sure whether to, whether to note this because this is an ability specifically in Sword Art Online. Like I don't, Kirito doesn't use it in any of the other games, but he does have in-game regeneration from that. And I'm wondering if I, if that would uh, translate in Minecraft or if that would be an ability he can have. In-game. Um, If they had, like, in-game re- regeneration, if we were using game stuff, Odds has, like, a time stop and time slow ability. Oh, okay. So, so everything gets kind of... It can become the whole fucked yeah. up thing. Uh, if we if we were to use the game abilities, Lyoko just kind of auto wins. Yeah, he, he just sort of uh, <laughs> climbs up to the top of their thing and just shoots the bed from across the map. <laughs> Very yeah. little, very little of Bed Wars comes down to. I mean, a, a big part of winning the game is skill versus skill and who's a fighting. But a big part of like actually just securing the dub is just breaking the other team's bet. So I'd imagine yep. Team Lyoko just being a lot stealthier. Then I don't know how many. Well, stealth. I mean, they're not really. They're not really. Matter, that, that is that that isn't their stealth. Isn't their thing. But they are good at time sensitive base missions like yeah the whole thing with lyoko is trying to get to a tower and deactivate it before xana causes a fucking massive worldwide catastrophe so it's like all right let's get to the tower and have alita shut it off before a nuclear bomb goes off let's have alita deactivate the tower before um the fucking what's it called it's the dinosaur cold thing they, before xana starts a fucking ice age mm-hmm. let's go mm-hmm. to the tower <laughs> And make sure and shut off the alternate universe. Let's go to the tower and make sure that these two um, countries don't fucking nuke each other. You mentioned <laughs> some of your characters can fly. Now, I yeah, if, Alita. They fly. Alita. Now? Alita can oh um, has they wings. can freaking okay. fly. If I am Alita allowed has wings. to extend yeah. password uh-huh. online, get the Alpha. I'm Kirito and Asuna can do that too. All, yeah. all of them but, can. I'm pretty sure. But all, sure. Of, sure but all, all of them have. Fly. But all of Lyoko warriors have flight options. Like the thing mm-hmm. is, is that Kirito and Asuna are going to have to fucking hard carry while the rest don't do shit. Besides maybe heal sometimes. But the, like the Lyoko warriors are like, are a fucking unit. Like they work the best together. Kirito is, is able to make yeah. a big dragon in Alfheim. 
Like it's 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 at first they say it's an illusion, but then it turns out Wait. like it's it being very uh, vague. The dragon, the dragon, the dragon, the dragon, the dragon actually fucks people. people. Yeah, yeah, and I don't like I don't know um what what they're going to do if like Alita and Jeremy just makes a fucking force field around the bed and just keep yeah. it protected. Well, the, you, you, I mean, you can also force field around the bed. Also, yeah. D- DJ, but you mentioned Jeremy one can of them. Unhack it. You mean I'm you mentioned sure. one of them has telekinesis, right? Yeah. What's stopping them from just like telekinetically pulling the bed over to their side of the map? <laughs> I mean, let's uh, just assume that the beds can't uh, be itself yeah. can't the be taken. Okay, I think if you can actually game... hack out Yui's force field, I think you actually would just take it because if that's I, yeah. I am leaning I towards Jeremy, Ryoko I, right I, now. I think, I think Jeremy could just out. I think Jeremy because it'd be one thing if Jeremy is just like in the background and then like. They're asking him to hack it, but Aelita's also there. Yeah. And Aelita's powers is, like, literally just fucking with, like, the programming structure of the world they're in. I do still need mm. that. There might still be some stuff that Kirito could have had here, but I'm under-researched. Like guns. Like, I think, yeah. like, guns. I mean, if they, if they yeah, mess with the programming, they, they could step the up. They could mess up, like, the uh, like the item generators on uh, Einkrad's side of the map. They could stop them from, like, getting materials to trade for stuff to protect them. Oh, actually, yeah. Having it, direct access mess- to, like, hacking the game is it, what's fucking me. Yeah, hacking. Well, we're... and I also even without oh, the hacking, actually... I think that they're just like they're way too varied. Like Yumi and Ulrich, no martial artist. They do seem Ulrich's tighter a good because sniper. Kirito and, like and to be a loner. That, most of most of Minecraft, he was. And on top of that, Odd is like an actual like game and like he's I... a gamer. Like well, he, he will know exactly what's going gamer. on. Kirito's a big gamer. Yeah. yeah. I want to say it. Could they really be public about hacking that much? Because if they started doing that, wouldn't we're gonna Minecraft fucking like, Kirito, You're fucking cheating! You guys are fucking cheating! <laughs> yeah, Mike, yeah, Minecraft. Oh no! Like, um, because like Germany, the on. Because the government noticed like Jeremy's hacking ability is like, oh, the government. Well, let's take care of that real quick and done. <laughs> so they just shut down <laughs> all it, of my I I know. The book of admins. You're not gonna have anybody belly. respect. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 a bunch of noble admins are gonna be able to stop stop them from hacking <laughs> yeah, the game. Puny yeah, admins. Well, no, like just kicking them out. Like, like Jeremy literally just said, "Like, oh damn, it's the pesky fucking government again." Let me just it's the go feds. my way around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're gonna try to kick them out. The, the, the admins are gonna be one that's gonna get yeah. kicked out. <laughs> yeah, I think at this point it's safe to take it to a vote. No, no, I, I, mean, I agree that Lyoko wins. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah Lyoko wins. If yeah, only one of them has been referenced, then high on life, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, that was fun. That was fun to talk about. Yeah. Good, good debates, yeah. good debates. Now we're going to yeah. see you guys in the next yeah. episode of Lightspeed. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Yeah. Have fun, everybody.